Hi everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm doing another one day makeover. This paint is super easy for any beginner who has never even tackled a piece of furniture. It's a great DIY paint for someone who just is looking to make over something in their house really quick and have it be really easy. So if you wanna see how I make over this piece, just keep watching. I am making over one of my pieces of furniture today. This is my son's dresser. We have had this for 10 years. It is a good sturdy piece, but it's definitely in need of a makeover. I took this dresser out of his room and replaced it with my last Beyond Paint project that I did. That was my one day makeover and you guys just loved that video. If you have not seen that yet, definitely go check it out. Today's video is sponsored by Beyond Paint. They have three new colors and I'm going to be trying out one of them today. Beyond Paint is a all-in-one paint. It is a primer, bonder, paint, and top coat all in one. I'm gonna be trying out the color sand today and it's a beautiful light beige. And I'm starting off by cleaning my piece with some simple green to remove all the grime and dirt and dust before I start painting. All you do is spray this on, let it set for a couple minutes, scrub it really well, and then come back in with some water and rinse it all off. Like I mentioned, they have three new colors and they're actually going to let me give away the other two colors that I'm not using today. So I have a forest green and a deep blue and a kit to go with each of them. So it's going to be really easy to apply. All you have to do is comment down below which color you'd like to try and all the rules of the giveaway are down in that description box. I had some seams that I wanted to fill, so I grabbed this Crickwood Epoxy. I really love this stuff because it dries really quickly and hard. You just form it in your hands together to mix the two compounds and then place it in the area that you want to fill. This had a lot of seams that once I got that light paint on there, I knew I wasn't going to like that look. So I just plugged up all those seams with this epoxy and it dries really fast. It's ready to sand within 15 minutes and it's ready to paint after one hour. My top was really damaged and this paint does a good job of kind of camouflaging things like that, but not when your scratches are this deep. You either need to go in and fill those with a wood filler and sand them down, or you can strip the entire top. And since I have some really good sanders, I decided to strip the top down and do a two-tone finish on this piece, but I totally gouged through the veneer as I was doing that. But I just kept going because at this point I needed to get all that existing stain off. I will go back and address that later in the video. Once I was done sanding the top, I went down and sanded all my epoxy so it would be nice and flat and those seams would all be filled. After I was done sanding, I grabbed a tack cloth to remove any dust I created while I was sanding. And I also propped my piece up on some painter's pyramids. I love to do this because it's way easier to paint the bottom of your piece that way. And then I removed all the hardware because I knew I was going to replace that. Now that my piece is all prepped, I'm ready to paint. I'm gonna be using their new color sand. It's a beautiful light beige and I have one of their kits to apply it that comes with a tray, a fabric, a three eight inch nap roller and a chip brush. And I wanted to protect my top because at this point I thought I was gonna do a two tone finish. So I'm just taping that off so it doesn't get any paint on it. This paint really loves to be rolled and that is the best way to put it on. The majority of your piece that you can roll, the better off you're gonna be. And then you're gonna use the chip brush to get in areas that your roller can't reach. But it's always a good idea just to smooth everything out with that roller. It goes on really, really textured, but as it dries, it levels out and it'll look really smooth in person, but up close and when you touch it, there will be a little bit of texture there. And when you use the chip brush, you want to use a stippling and pushing motion. You don't want to do brush strokes. That type of motion is not going to work with this paint. The last time I used this paint, my piece was very flat, so I didn't have to utilize the chip brush a lot, but this one was very curvy and had a lot of details in it, so I definitely had to do more of the chip brush. So just so you know, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging if you have curves and things to your piece. So starting out with a really flat piece without a lot of detail might be a better idea. It still works for a really detailed piece like this. You're just gonna spend more time using that chip brush. Okay. 
chip brushes are great for this paint because they're really affordable and they do really well with the stippling type motion, but they do shed a lot. So you might have to pick out some hairs as you're going, pay attention to that. But once you get them out, just go back over and stipple that spot again and everything will be fine. And I always use the roller after I stipple to smooth out as much of that area as I can. After two hours of dry time, I'm ready to come back in and do my second coat. Everything is looking great and leveling out beautifully. But as I took a look at the piece, I wasn't liking the two-tone finish. I felt like the kind of orangey top was really taking away from the beautiful light beige color. Plus I had that problem of the uh, gouge that I did in the veneer because I wasn't careful while I was sanding. So I decided to just do one color over the whole piece and with Beyond Paint, what's great about it is that it sticks to so many surfaces like raw wood, metal, formica, laminate, plastic, glass, linoleum, masonry, tile, marble, concrete, and even to previously painted and finished surfaces like I did on the bottom portion. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint this top. And since this has this detailing in it, I like to take my chip brush and mush the paint down and stipple the paint down in there first, and then I'll roll the whole top. I also wanted to point out that I like to wrap my roller and my brush in plastic in between coats. That's what that way I can get it all done in one day. If you're letting this set overnight for some reason, I would wash those out. This cleans up really easily with soap and water and let them dry overnight and then they'll be ready to use the next day. I zoomed in here so you can see how textured this paint goes on, but like I told you, as it dries, it flattens and levels out. You will be left with a little bit of texture to the feel, but it definitely looks way more textured as you're putting it on as opposed to what it's gonna look like dry. This is really great because it does eliminate brush marks. You don't see those, you don't see the roll marks, and it provides a finish that conceals some of those imperfections, those little nicks and dings that you see in pieces of furniture. This piece is really, really dark and I'm going to a light color. And when you're doing that, you're probably gonna need three coats. In this case, I did need three coats. The last time I did a project when I was using a dark color over a lighter finish, I only needed two coats. So just keep that in mind when you are ordering your paint, what you are trying to accomplish. I was able to get three coats out of my pint. I definitely would have felt a lot more comfortable having a quart on this project, but I think for most dressers that you're gonna refinish, a pint will do just great. That's all I used on my previous Beyond Paint makeover. So after the second coat dried, I decided to put in the drawers so I could see what they looked like. And here's where I have a huge tip for you. As you are removing drawers from your piece, number them because drawers really only are meant to go in one spot on your dresser. And it took me about 15 to 20 minutes to figure out where each one of these drawers went. Once I finally got my drawers in the right place, I went in and did a third coat touch up on any spots where I saw that dark wood still peeking through. Since the top of the piece was raw wood, I only had to do two coats on there because I didn't have that dark finish that I needed to cover up. Like I mentioned earlier, recoat time for this paint is two to four hours. For this paint to really bond to your surface, it's gonna take seven days. So you wanna be really careful with it during those first seven days. And then it will cure down completely in 30 days. And after that, you can wipe up spills or any dirt you get on it with a mild soap and water. I let my piece dry overnight and I'm gonna be adding some flat black knobs for some contrast to this light paint. I ended up having to get one and one fourth inch screws because the two screws that this came with did not work. I need to order some of those in bulk. Does that ever happen to you? <laughs> Another one day makeover complete. Just to remind you, here is what I started off with and here is what it looks like now. You know, I picked this piece out once upon a time, so I did really love it dark, but it's so fun to completely change it up and turn it into this light neutral dream and really bump up that drama with this flat black knob. This would go perfectly in my bedroom and I'm trying to convince my husband that we need to keep it. Um, I'll keep you posted on what happens. Thanks for joining me for today's project, you guys. Don't forget to comment down below if you want a chance to win that forest green or deep blue color. I will be back next week with another project. Thanks for being here, you guys, and I will see you next time. What are you doing? You're looking pretty for this.
Oh, I can't believe I just got this in my hand. Oh, I got a frog in my throat. Why'd you call that? You don't want to scratch it. My channel. <laughs> I got a frog in my throat. <laughs> a beginner who's never painted a piece of furniture. And I don't know what I said in the other one that I liked so much. Hi, Murphy. This is how the sausage gets made. 